Hey everybody, welcome back. We're 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 cruising, man. Not that it's been, you know, insanely easy the whole time. Let's see if we continue our run of good luck, at least from the randomizer's perspective. Regular Judas to Mega Stan. Okay. That's you know, you wanna look at the randomizer for the rest of the run and not look at the run? That could be fun. That comes up a lot as a suggestion, believe it or not. I'm not trying to sound rude, not trying to make anybody have the worst day at their job or anything. But sometimes people go like, hey, NL, have you ever considered just as like a laugh uploading uh, like a uh, an Isaac episode where like you don't talk at all? Or an Isaac episode where like the screen region is just like a little corner? I'm like, I guess like uh, the answer is no, I never considered it. Um, and you might say that makes me, like, Mr. No Fun, but, hey, when you got a solemn job like this, a, a duty, really, I would say a public service, it's in your best interest to, to treat it with the decorum that it deserves uh, and the severity that it deserves. You never know when an Isaac episode might find someone in a time of need, and uh, obviously I'm being facetious for the most part, but the, the, re the real thing is, you know, I've had situations where I, like, watched uh, YouTube channels and then on April Fool's Day, they're like, as, our jo as a joke for today, we've made our video uh, unwatchable. And I'm always like, okay, uh, very funny, guess I won't watch it. You know, it's like, I, I get it. But simultaneously, I'm like, I, I don't know if I respect it. I, I guess it's just a laugh. It's just a one-day laugh. I'm not trying to say having fun is illegal. How did you get the, the leaked platform I plan to run on for Canadian Prime Minister in 2044? It's supposed to be privileged information. Does, does this do anything for Judas? No effect yet. Okay, fair enough. I'm just, normally, the Judas play, not to be confused with the pot play, normally the Judas play is you buy a Spirit Heart from your first shop. Without having the ability to do that, I have to get slightly more creative. Like, you never know. Let's try one bomb here. That's a lot of money. That, that might be enough for us to at least... Uh, it's probably not actually enough for us to take a look at that. And then, that's... I don't know, I think it's probably four to six cents. Hate that you are a champion. Hate that you're a champion. Just pop up, thank you. That, that's probably enough to lethal you. More or less. We didn't get HP, it's really hard to complain. Believe it or not, I think we fish for the uh, second secret room. I think that's the highest possible yield. The yield has not paid out. We're down to the next floor and, and still nervous, quite frankly, because normally at this point, you would you would find yourself having received an item uh, and, and or, uh, some HP, I should say. Now here, again, we would know if it was HP if we didn't have Curse of the Blind. This experimental treatment is not HP. This was a, a very bold decision. We got a little lucky there. Um, we do have 11 damage. Like, like everything went up for us except range, but range is irrelevant. So, like, experimental treatment was awesome, but I would give up, like, 4 damage for 1 HP right now, and that's not a common situation. But the, the good news is if you just get the HP, like, maybe right here, for ex even a Spirit Heart, for example, Okay, I actually like this item, but if if you get HP, this run now is entering, like, already one territory. We, and now, there's so many outs for us, I apologize for continuing to bring it up, but it's kind of, it's on my mind because the run is still slightly harrowing until we get that tolerance built in, but now we just need a spirit heart in our shop. Okay, so there's no spirit heart on a second shop in a row. It's hard to avoid the feeling that the game is trying to create a situation where it's like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if he had all these offensive tools and then it all came crashing down because he took one hit against Pestilence or something like that. That's, that's where I'm feeling right now. Now, that might just be like me buying into a conspiracy theory or something, but for now, we'll just get a move on. 
You would think as well. I was just gonna say, via left hand, you would think we would get some red chests that would give us a chance. Or a tinted rock at some point. <laughs> or... <laughs> I'm really trying to avoid the comedic timing, okay? I'm just really I'm in, my, in my heart of hearts. Okay, fair enough. Thank you for not being uh, like the Fallen. I don't even know if the Fallen could show up on the first floor. That would be scary. HP? Jesus juice. I mean, I gotta tell you, we're just going down to the next floor. I don't want to spend money on the shop. And if we're fighting Mega Satan, we absolutely must... Uh, go to... Stop giving me these curse rooms, man. If if we're fighting uh, Mega Satan, we absolutely must get angel deals. So, keep it moving. Certainly, this is at, like, the longer end of uh, the amount of time you'd expect to go without getting HP. But it is also, like, really good. Like, this is an insanely strong run. You're you're cruel. You're cruel. After I use my bomb, you give me that Zodiac into Stompy. <laughs> Shouldn't have even taken Zodiac, to be honest. You knew that, but you already knew that. Your actions control your reality. Your outlook controls your. What does he say? I can't remember. Champion. Don't get hit by the champion. My brain gave me the opportunity to resign myself to death there, and I said no. Thank you, brain. I appreciate that. I, 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 ooh, okay. Would you look at this? Would you look at this? Now we got one spirit heart, and then we come down here. Now we got two spirit hearts. Joke's on you. I got another freaking spirit heart. We do need uh, another bomb, so we might have to do some exploration here, because we, we have a you know 40% chance of an angel deal. Let's go exploring first. And now, hey, how you doing? It's a Monday. <laughs> Lucky us, it is Monday at uh, at 9.30 a.m. Had a good weekend. No, oh, thank you. Pretty low-key weekend, as as it often is. With the, with the baby especially, but it's, it's getting crazy. Like, you know, I, I've previously espoused the idea that, you know, when, when people say, oh, they grow up so fast, that that's not literally true. It just feels, I mean, this is obvious. I'm not trying to be like, you know, the ultimate, like, super nerd when it comes to like, well, what actually time passes at the same rate no matter what. But, you know, when you're actually, when, when you see your nieces or your nephews like once a year and they're larger this time than they were last time, you go, oh, they grow up so fast. When, you, when you're there every single day and you're like, well, actually, that took like 400 dinners to get them to that level, you know? You, you see the process that goes into it. When people see me and I'm a little bit larger now than the last time they saw me, I just say, hey, give me a break. You know, we had a baby, the pandemic, etc., etc. You're not perfect. You're, not, you're a fake and a fraud. You're not an intellectual. Oh, thank you. Let's, uh, yeah, let's do that as well. This this is now borderline unlosable, as as ridiculous as that'll sound so early on the run. This is just, like, I, I, I got a lot of confidence here. But actually, this past weekend, our daughter is, like, she's standing up uh, way more confidently. Like, she's not even hoisting herself up on objects. She's just, like, from a sitting position, she, she's just, like, now I stand. She's, uh, she's babbling out of control. She's mimicking, like, most of the sounds that we make. Not with 100% effectiveness, but, like, you can tell that's the intention. Before, it was just kind of, you know, every once in a while, you get, like, a da or something like that. Now, she's like, look what I can do. And it's, uh, I mean, it's awesome. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it's, it, now I'm like, I understand when they say they grow up so fast. So this item doesn't even work. It's okay. It should only take a second to fix. Like, duality is, is somehow bugged. I, I don't know the exact methodology of the bugging, but it is somehow bugged here. I actually... So, I, I think perfection is an amazing trinket. But I do wonder sometimes... <laughs> bombs placed by Isaac explode more quickly? No, thank you. I do wonder sometimes, given that we expect to lose it, is it worth dumping all of these? 
I think we're actually, believe it or not, I think we're better off taking the hollow heart. And possibly, give me a second here. This is a, a bit brazen, especially considering we've not had a lot of opportunities to get uh, HP. But I think we sack a spirit heart to our cursed room. In the hopes of gulping. And, or getting something amazing in here. Which obviously didn't work. And we didn't gulp. Okay. Then I think we stick with the bone heart. I think we took our chances. I know what you're thinking. It's gotta be something. I know what you're thinking. Her name is Rio and she dances on the sands. Suppose hypothetically it's metaphorically akin to a river twisting through these dusty lands. And then one might assume it follows naturally from that. That when she shines she really shows you all she can. Addendum, O oh, Rio, Rio, dance across the Rio Grande. Hmm. Hmm, hmm. Hmm, hmm. Check this out. You're not gonna take my bone heart. You're gonna take my half red heart. Then, we can come into the boss trap room with the strangest possible uh, HP setup. We still do not want to get hit. You, uh, you never do, really. But our bone hearts are, are more precious for us at present than even, you know, the average. So let's make sure we're getting those filled as soon as possible. We've got a really impressive run here. It would be, like, really, really impressive if we could also, at, at any point in our lives, pick up, uh, you know, just hypothetically, like... <laughs> let's just go a little bit, but don't forget about that eternal heart. If, if we could pick up, you know, like, even more HP, like... What you're seeing right now is the sum total of HP that we've had on this entire run. Which is pretty impressive that we're we're preserving it all, but... Uh, well, no, that's not fair. We sacked the Spirit Heart to our curse room. So there is that, but... Anyway. Yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. It's been, it's been a good time, though, just, uh... You know, very baby-focused stuff, you know? I'm, I'm, it, it, if there's one thing, I was thinking about it, because, you know, when you're on baby duty, there's a lot of, like, um, you, you spend some time as an adult in your imagination. Uh, a, it gets you introspective, because you're, like, you know, spending quality time with your child. We, what do we have for Zodiac? We don't know? Okay. Um, but B, also, like, I, I'm not afraid to say some of the stuff that some parents are afraid to say. Like, maybe... You're, you have kids yourself and you're wondering if, like, these emotions are okay. Uh, I'm here to tell you that, at least in my experience, what I'm about to say is relatable, okay? Looking after the baby is also kind of boring. <laughs> There's moments of... Look at this. Look at this, man. Look at this. There's moments of uh, majesty and heartwarming and, like... There's, there's lots of awesome stuff that can that can and does happen there but there's also a i don't know if you're gonna take my eternal heart you're not thankfully um there's also a lot of boredom because like i mean i read like 15 books to my daughter yesterday and you know i think i know all of them uh by heart some of them are cuter than others i'm here to tell you i don't think like you need to be a genius to write a children's book <laughs> Some of them, I don't know, this is super rude. It's not really what I think, but it crosses my mind sometimes. You know, sometimes I read a book and it's like less than 75 words, and it's like, the bear jumped on the trampoline. Wow, bear, go. And then at the end, it's like, you know, by Melissa Cartwright. And I'm like, you putting your name on this? You should, this should have said by Alan T. Smithy. Like, this is... <laughs> I don't think I don't think the booger tears will work, but if they if they do, we gotta look. I'm not saying you didn't do it or that it wasn't worth doing. I'm just like, it's come on, it's not that you didn't. Do it. I'm, uh, yes, okay. Am I insulting children's authors? No, not really. Uh, in my opinion, by the way, I think we gotta stick with this. Let, let's get the heck out of town. We don't we like we have a pretty one run. We don't need to stick around for life. Um, especially with these bone hearts getting filled up. I'm not saying, like, it's not a noble effort. I'm just saying, like, I'm surprised that after writing this book, that what you said was, I'm gonna put my name on this because everybody deserves to know who came up with this amazing thing. 
like when it, and maybe this is overly reductive, but like you know when I drive down like the highway, it's a very useful uh, apparatus. You know, it was a group effort. It, it, it took a lot of taxpayer money and and you know labor and stuff like that and even then if you're like what construction company built this that this thing that allows you to you know get to your in-laws place safely i'd be like i don't know but i could tell you who wrote the biggest kiss <laughs> with a hundred percent certainty i don't know it's a weird take i guess put put your name on it you know and then just like what's the worst case scenario some judgmental guy like me who's read the book 50 times is like you know Oh, big whoop, you wrote 20 words in a book that entertained my daughter for 8 minutes. Actually, I should be saying thank you, but I can't pivot off of this voice that I've already gotten myself in, and as a result, it's a weird bit. And yeah, I, I stick with the bone heart, the brittle heart over cracked crown here, so sue me. We need HP more than anything else. Hmm. I, if we had a charge, like if we had 9 volt, I would probably take telepathy for dummies. But... Book of Belial's been doing some some lovely work for us, nonetheless. Remember, Mega Satan. That's like the only thing that screws this run up now. But I was also thinking, like, if if I could give advice, and and nobody ever asked me for like life advice. They always ask me for like streaming advice, and then they get mad because like so much. And, and I think this is just honest, by the way. I'm not trying to like beat the question by coming up with like a, a trick answer. When people are like, what's your advice for streaming? There is some stuff, like, I, I can only give from the perspective of, like, what I feel has worked for me and also mistakes that I've made. And also, you know, what I've seen happen to streamers who have been around for a while and then maybe, like, they started to hit kind of like an ebb instead of a flow. And so I'll be like, oh, well, I think, you know, you should figure out what kind of content you want to stream. Like, wh what's your what's your niche? Are you extremely good at video games? Are you, like, a Battle Royale superstar? Um... Are you, uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with this for the record, are you like directionless and then just looking for a, a plausible justification to play League of Legends for 10 hours a day? Um, and then when people like get on your back about not doing anything, you're like, I'm trying to launch my streaming career. And, and it, you just be honest with yourself, right? Like that, that's probably how like half of the people in the industry got there. <laughs> it's like, you know, tr trying to make a, a hobby productive. Uh, are you funny? You know, do you do you have a good banter with your friends? Are you good at networking? Like, are you are you ambitious? Are you are you little finger? Like, this stuff matters. And then, like, apart from that, I'm like, you know, stick to a schedule. Don't break it unless you absolutely, you know. I don't I don't mean to say like put tons of pressure on yourself to never take a day off, but like, you know, come up with a schedule you can reasonably stick to, and then stick to it with like 98 percent cohesion you start getting into a position where you you know you, you, you promise people you're gonna be live like six days a week and then every other week you take two days off you know at the last possible minute with five minutes notice before it starts like don't get me wrong you gotta do you but I think people start to look into alternatives at that point anyway like that that's my advice for that but my other advice is just like be born in the late 80s or early 1990s should leave you at uh, the exact right point in your life to dedicate way too much time to it right as it's on the ascent. Like, that is very responsible for, for me having had some momentum early. I've done a good job of keeping the momentum up to some extent. <laughs> some, some great moments and some missed opportunities, but that's life. Apparently duality, maybe not bugged. Look at that. Um... But, but certainly not not sore about where I'm at. But I also do recognize that, like, I, I've worked hard to... I, I worked hard to get there, I worked hard to preserve it, but I only really had the ability to work hard to get there in the first place due to timing, more or less. Not to say you can't do it now, but it is... It, it's always harder. It, it gets harder, like, every year, I think. Every, every day, technically, but... Anyway, but the advice I was thinking is, like, if people ask me for life advice, like, if I could go back and, uh, if I, if I could speak to, like, 16-year-old me, and as someone who's 32, you know, twice the age, what advice would I give myself at that age? Well, honestly, like, and, and this is so obviously, like, uh, 
as a result, it, it's it's tinted by the glasses of being a new parent. I would say, enjoy this period of your life where you can be bored. Let me let me look at this for a sec. We must have gulped our trinket. And and boredom. Oh right, it, it's done. Boredom. It gets a bad rap. Uh, and I I think that. We owe that to Harvey Danger, right? With flagpole Sitta. If you're bored, then you're boring. We, we've smelted another trinket here. Beautiful. Um, a lucky penny as well. And another blood bag. Well, it's funny to think we were complaining about HP at any point on this run. Um, but I really think, like, when you're bored... When you let me let me start from because I'm I'm spinning my wheels here. I gotta you know get some traction. I need sips and ravs to help me out. You know, can you guys get me out of this this uh, snow covered ditch here? I have not been bored in quite some time, and it's not because like I have so much like you know going on in my life that I don't have the chance to be bored. It's that literally like my life is so structured with routine right now, uh, and it, it's just packed to the gills. Not with like, you know, oh, cool guy, cocktail hours and, you know, like mixers and stuff like that, but literally like, I, let me put it this way. I, I deliberately wake up like earlier than I've ever willfully woken up in my adult life just to make sure that I can squeeze in hopefully three, but usually two YouTube videos and then also be ready for the stream. And then when the stream's over, it's baby time. And then, you know, when baby time's over, it's uh, cooking dinner. And then when dinner time's over, it's... Uh, you know, cleaning up the kitchen and setting the videos, and then when that's over, I gotta, like, finally take a shower so I'm not so stinky and stink up our bed, and then I get, like, you know, time to play one Slay the Spire run on Switch, and then it's bedtime. I'm not complaining, to be clear. I, I actually find the routine and the structure quite nice, honestly. Um, but there are times I, I miss having, like, like a, a Saturday, and, and I, I miss it in the same way, like I also miss being like, you know, 12 years old sometimes, which is to say that you do miss it, but like you're not going back. <laughs> it's, it's wistfulness rather than like ambitious nostalgia. I do, I miss the occasional feeling of like a Saturday where you got literally nothing to do. And you, you just sort of let the day carry you away. So I was, you know, I, I, I get that it's kind of like the the fallacy of, uh, or, or the catch-22 of aging. People used to talk about it with, like, video games. They'd be like, well, when you're a kid, you know, you have all this time, but you don't really have the means to buy all the video games that you want to play. So the way that the, the mind of a child works. When, when you're an adult, you've maybe got more... Dis well, you, you probably have more disposable income than you had as a child. Whether or not you have enough to buy all the video games you possibly want is, you know... <laughs> is probably optimistic, but... There's a lot of games coming out these days. Let's ignore that. Uh, and... Okay, we're going to Mega Satan. We might as well take the negative. Can I just say... And this is... I'm going to jinx it for the record, but... We have not been hit on this run. Oh, we've not taken damage on this run except from curse rooms and blood banks, I think. That's kind of crazy. Like, we're, we're... We're riding a new wave today. That'll change by Mega Satan, presumably, but... I think it's kind of the same, though, like... You know, when I was a kid, I had a lot of time. I didn't have that much to do. You know, I... 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 I wish that I had, had more hobbies back then, but... You know, it, 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 it being like the the best person or one of the two best people in your friend group at Halo 2 on Xbox Live, hey man, that's like that's that's enough. Back then, give me this. We already have our key pieces. We could pick up something here. You know, uh, I don't think it's great, but I do think we can afford to give it a try. But I had all this time. I had nothing to do. Now I'm like. Well, I don't know if I have that much to do as an adult, honestly. Well, let me rephrase, because I, 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 being kind of, like I told you, I was spinning my wheels. <laughs> now I'm like, I'll think of something like, oh, you know, like this summer I was like, oh, I re really wouldn't mind trying like golf this summer, you know, not not just like 18 holes on the course, but like even a 
just go into a pitch and putt or something like that. A an outdoor activity that allows me to like get some exercise and you can play it with yourself and you know so on and so forth. And it just never came to pass because it's I, this is the rare no thank you situation because it's uh, it's it's just hard to find the time. You know you got other priorities in life. So I kind of I, I miss the boredom. But not to the extent that I want to go back. It's nice to also, I mean, like I said, if you gave me the choice now between a day that's like packed to the gills or a day that has nothing going on, 29 out of 30 days, I, I would actually prefer the packed to the gills one. It just, it just feels like, I don't know, I feel like a sense of accomplishment from it. But what I would say is enjoy, enjoy the boredom as much as you can. Because once it, uh, once, I remember I got this advice from my dad, like, right before I went to university. Like, I don't, I don't know what advice, you know, the average person gives to their child when they go to college, but the advice he gave me was very salient, I think. He said, you know, it won't seem like it at the time, but you will probably never have more free time than this in your entire life. Now, he might he might have been ignoring retirement, but, like... That's looking a little ways down the road for sure, so I, I forgive him for that. Obviously, Dad hasn't been listening to many Morningstar podcasts lately. Um, but at the time, I was like, you don't know what you're talking about, old man, who, who was probably like 44. <laughs> looking back, I'm like, yeah, okay, he, he was right. I did take advantage of that time, to be clear, but I, I'm passing that advice down to you as well now. It does suck to be bored, like, multiple times daily, maybe. Um, let, let's... Let's take more Devil Deals, man. Wow, amazing. Uh, I thought maybe because there were Eternal Hearts back here that that could be fun, but... My mistake. <laughs> I don't think that's actually actionable. I guess what I would say, you know what it's more about? I guess it's more about having appreciation for the ability to be a little bored. I remember, it's been a while, but I remember it sucks being uh, bored, you know, multiple days in a row. And, you know, I definitely remember the feeling on, like, some summer vacations of, like, you know, play, feeling like I have a sense of obligation to just, like, play a video game I'm bored with, which is funny. Yeah, oh, ho hum, another day of waking up and playing, I don't know, like six hours of FIFA 06, right? Like, I don't even like this game, but oh, it's my lot in life. But uh, it's good to have some appreciation for that. First off, you could do something else, for the record. And that's advice I probably wouldn't have taken, but... You know, you got a lot of time available to yourself right now, possibly, if you're in that position. I got to remember that my average demographic is, like, I think 25 to 34. But you know what's funny? I think that you, you might think that as a result of that, people would be like, Oh, we don't need to hear this. We already lived through that. It's not relevant. But I think instead, people, you know, that relate to me on this are like, Ah, yeah, tell, tell them more about what it's like. It's so true. So true, bestie. The teenagers will not take the advice. But the the people who have been through it on the other side are like, I wish that I'd gotten that advice, but we wouldn't have taken it either. Whatever, old man, you don't understand. The 80s were different. Okay, are we... Yeah, we're happy here. I gotta be honest, actually. Uh, Soul of Azazel... I don't think it's an item, if, if your run is stinky, I don't think the soul of Azazel is what you need to put yourself over the edge. But if your run is already quite good, the soul of Azazel seems like a really nice addition to the top of it, honestly. And we took the negative, so we'll go down. Is is the kind of item, I guess, like from a speedrun standpoint, you kind of look at it as a positive. By the way, we cannot get rid of uh, Brittle Bones. I guess there's no reason for us to even want to. We would always rather have a Bone Heart to a Real Heart as this character. Oh, we have uh, Ares, or Taurus on this floor. My mistake. Anyway, that's just, you know, it's just something that crossed my mind this weekend. 
You can be nostalgic without turning into like Lester Burnham, I think, from uh, American Beauty and being like, you know, I want to be 14 years old again. Uh, life changes as you get older, both, both for better and for worse. You know what's kind of nice about being an adult is like, you know, I, uh, I cooked like a delicious halibut this weekend. Not the whole fish. I mean, that would probably be like... I don't know how big a halibut is. It might be like, you know, a thousand dollars, but um, cooked a delicious halibut. We got it as a, as a university student, especially wasn't buying too much halibut. A couple of times a month, I would get myself maybe like some some fish and chip style fish and then cook it in the oven. But it's never the same as as what you get from a, a, a pub or a restaurant, right? I'm. Honestly, I, I gotta admit, there's some foods, and I think most people would agree with this. There's some foods that, you know, the the standard home version is not quite there. Let me hit you with some, okay? And I'm gonna start by arguing from the opposite, as I often do. Chicken tenders? You can do a reasonable facsimile of a restaurant chicken tender in an oven or an air fryer. No problem. You know, if for some reason, those just work uh fish and chips do not turn out the same in the oven the breading is a little like gummy instead of being crispy so often you end up with like the whole fish comes off in like one bite and you're left just like nobody's gonna eat that batter and then when people turn their head you eat the batter i'm gonna i'm gonna get spicy man damocles let me let me look at this for a moment please Doubles all item pedestals and beggar rewards. Kills you at a random time when taking damage from an enemy after you use the item. You can laugh at me all you want. I'm I'm not willing to do it. These this is horrible. So I'm basically just gonna do this room. God, he's tanky, man. And I'm gonna do one more room. And this is just to get a book of Belial charge. Look, if you're if you're going throw, 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 like more power to you, but like literally, we still at present have not taken a single hit <laughs> on this on this run that didn't come from a curse room. We could lose. I don't think we will, but we could. I am a little bit surprised by my 7.46 damage. Like, did, did something come out of Zodiac that that did a number on me there? I don't, I don't understand, really. Like, I, I feel like even on, like, our second floor, we were doing uh, more damage than this to the horsemen. But don't get disheartened. Good stuff. Just, just this is maybe the first time since those early floors where you gotta you gotta play. You gotta actually be sensible in your actions. Keep in mind, infinite range is is an whoa. <laughs> infinite range is an amazing uh, get. Oculus Rift is an amazing get here. You know, very very good defensively for sure. That was, that was poor. We are going to take damage. Um, we knew it was going to happen as well. Again, only only a fool would predict, uh, you know, no, no damage taken over the whole run. Now, of course, I'm saying that in the hopes that maybe <laughs> you're going to be the one that saves me and all that. There it is. We knew it was, it was en route. Okay. When it rains, it pours. Guess the laws of physics don't apply to bombs. You got HP for me? Does that? No, that's not how that works. Just pay close attention. He's covering his mouth. I can't see what he's going to do. <laughs> I thought you were doing an attack. You just got frozen in place. Real angels move silent like lasagna. Anyway, I don't know what I was talking about. Oh, foods that don't do as well at home. 
I gotta hit you with another one, like... And this is, uh... Maybe this is a little bit less relatable. But samosas. Man, a, a, a beautiful samosa from an Indian restaurant. Crispy, kind of burns the roof of your mouth a little bit. Delicious, like, you know, soft potato spices, peas inside, fantastic. Grocery store samosas, even warmed up, is like... It's just like a, a tetrahedral vegetarian taco. It's just it, it's not necessarily terrible, but it's it doesn't give me the same you know the same oomph I'm looking for. I guess I'm realizing that it's it's hard to create crispy at home. And you know what? That's that's why I'm such a big fan of the air fryer. Not a sponsored video. I'm just saying. Dr. Octopus, Spider-Man No Way Home, clearly you don't own an air fryer. Hey, PETA, have you ever... Hello, PETA. You know, oh, leftover french fries? You know, if you put those in the air fryer, PETA, they're... <laughs> PETA? Get an airy. I, I, I tried. That's that's Norman Osborn. I mean, it was Doctor Octopus uh, as played by the inimitable Alfred Molina, uh, and then it w morphed into Willem Dafoe as uh, I was going to say the Green Giant. You know, the the vegetable spokesperson. Bro, just be dead. You're dead. Thank you. Thank you. Like, why why continue this song and dance unnecessarily? Hey, for now, thanks for watching. It was a great run. If you enjoyed it, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. It's 12 in a row. 12 kills on the board right now. See you next time.